Greetings, ladies and gentle players. It is January 3rd, 2020, uh, Friday, the first basics of 2020. And I thought we were going to go ahead and start this year off right by going over a couple of things. One, I'm going to harken back to some DDK games because last month, as you know, I was doing all one Don games. Don't want to leave the cues out in the cold. And I want to take the time in this video to also go over again what exactly basics are. So we're going to take a few minutes here just to kind of go over the fundamental things we're looking for in our basic games at the various levels. Now, if you've been paying close attention, you already know uh, what essentially is going to be on this like little list of sorts. So this is just going to be a refresher. And for those of you who are uncertain, then great. This little primer is going to be well uh, for you. After that, we're going to go jump into our basic games. You can probably find the time index on when everything begins somewhere in the comments down below. And while you're down there, you can check the description for the link to gohio.org and find all the information you need on the Midwest Open, January 18th and 19th in Southern Ohio. If you haven't checked it out yet, only a couple of days left for the, till the event. You should check it out just so you know definitively whether or not it's something that you want to try and go to. There's going to be Go players from all over the place. Ohio, Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and others. But maybe a little bit too far away, can't quite make it. Maybe January is just not your month. That's okay, you have a second chance to go to a tournament over in Texas, coming in February 15th and 16th. Go to good old Texas. can find out more about that on their Facebook page, also linked down below. As always, thanks to Baduk Club for in part sponsoring this video. Right, so one of the first things we look for in a basic game is the largest move. That is definitely the one thing that we are completely looking for across the spectrum. I don't care if we are playing DDK or if we're playing one of the high Ds. We're always looking for where that larger uh, move is, especially in the beginning of the game. Uh, take this for example. This is fine. We can kick, kick, kick. We're being told is great. So sure. Uh, from here, we want to finish the Jiseki. Unfortunately, we get pincered here. So what does Black do? Black does not want to randomly play away. Black wants to probably move and surround the person that decided not to come out. That is a very, very big play to do. Um, this weird stuff aside. All right. Black is settled. White settled. What's next largest point? We want to go corner, side, center in the opening. So we're probably looking towards playing an enclosure or an approach. I said those in the opposite order, but you get the idea. Instead, does white? No, white connects here for really no reason. At worst, all white can, all black can do, sorry, is take one stone, in which case we have Sente again. And we could probably find a better spot on the board than the first line to play these two moves. You can envision that, for example, let's say we play here. Your opponent plays here. Okay, for whatever reason, he wants that. Great. I get to go ahead and reapproach a stone because we were always looking for where the larger point is. How did we know that we had Sente? bring up number two, to take the larger point? Well, we ask ourselves very, very simple questions. Um, are we about to be outnumbered? For example, if our opponent approaches us, we probably want to respond. Why? Because if we don't, then he can approach again and suddenly we're outnumbered 2v1. Now there are Jaseki here to make sure that we're not going to get, uh, get in and over our heads here. But that's not really basic because you need to know Jiseki set patterns, which pattern to take against which stone to get the best result for the rest of the stones on the board. It's just, ah, I don't consider that basic. Heck, I don't even play away usually from approaches when I'm playing hide on. So there you go with that. So, okay. Large points, especially in the opening, are usually going corners, let's say into side, into center. 
it is also making sure that if there is an extension, as we see it too, we block the enclosure. Because if we play elsewhere, then suddenly there's an enclosure and extension. A lot of easy ways to make territory between those two. So typically speaking, in the opening, we're just going to go ahead and make sure that doesn't happen. If they have one, we get the other. Simple as that, right? And if they approach, we don't want to be outnumbered, so we typically respond. We always ask ourselves if we have sente. How do we know if we have sente? Um, does it give me an example here? Yes, we do. We made our group have an extra stone to make sure it's not going to be surrounded. It's got a bit of a base. We're at the beginning of the game. It's all we really need. Therefore, we must have Sente as white. Black played here again. We're not going to play Puppy Go. Instead, we're going to take the larger move for ourselves. Yes, there is Aji here still. And you might be a little bit worried about that. I get it. I get it. You could be worried about it. But do you really have to be? At worst, if you play it badly, you have this result. And then you've got another extension for yourself. Right? We've got a base. We're not going to get surrounded anytime soon. We can play away. Simple as that. Now, the finding the larger point is going to reoccur greatly. As you can see here, we've got a base. Black has a base, corner, side, center. We can play away. Instead, white keeps playing here for some time, giving black opportunity to take larger moves. So you can begin seeing how important it is to know when we have sente, why we know we have sente, and being able to identify large points on the board. Now, there are a few other things that we look forward to. Let's see if I can find them in this game. All right, I wasn't really able to find a great example in this game, but another one is going to be cutting points. We want to always be wary of the cutting points. As you can see here, just really quickly looking around the board, uh, we can see that a lot of these cutting points are being protected already, right? White has gone out of his way, and so is black has gone out of his way to protect, uh, make sure these really obvious cutting points are protected. You'd be surprised how often they're not. And little things like this, for example, are left behind. We want to make sure we don't do that because suddenly what could have been a nice strong group drops completely dead because we just left the cutting points behind. And then something as simple and easy to remember as go. Defend the cutting points turns into death, right? Just turns flat out completely dead. So we do want to pay attention to that as well and make certain that we have nice strong shape and we aren't leaving these kind of weaknesses, these kind of cutting points behind for our opponent to harass us with. Now, one last thing I'm going to mention is sector lines. You hear me mentioning that a lot, not going back behind sector lines. And if we were to draw a line between sector lines, let's say this area here of whites, we would say the outer edge for this area is probably about in here. So making certain that as black, we don't go beyond that sector line unless we know if we have a very, very clear way of living. It's probably something we want to avoid. Otherwise, as we can see here, there's just nowhere to go and now we're just going to die. Because we went behind the sector line, we got cut off and killed. Happens constantly. Very, very, very unfortunate when it occurs because the game can just end as someone just isn't able to leave and live locally and they just kind of drop dead. Instead, we want to make sure that sector line is strictly adhered to and maybe play something as simple as this one because here, for example, we didn't go far behind it, therefore we were unable to be surrounded, so this is a nice adequate reduction. You know, just things like that. Very, very simple things. Beware sector lines. Look for large points on the board. Make sure we know when we have Sente and why. Make sure that if we have an extension, we try to get an enclosure for it if we can. If we have an enclosure, get an extension for it if we can. And if our opponent has an extension, we block that enclosure. If our opponent has an enclosure, we block that extension. So there's a very, very, very few very simple things to look out for, things to work on, and you'll be surprised how far just these little concepts really take us in our game. And that's without even getting in 
to uh, complicated things like worrying about uh, attacking and things like that. So let's go ahead and grab like a DDK game and show these concepts in action. Alrighty then, we got a game, we are white. We are playing a 7Q, which is pretty close to DDK. I'm going to play dual 4-4 four, four points. We took the corners. Now we're going to approach. Since both of these are 4-4 four, four stones, doesn't matter which one we approach. We got pincered. One thing we don't do is jump out from a 4-4 four, four pincer, simply because it doesn't really give us anything. So we're going to go into the corner instead, and just try to live like so. This is just a basic Jaseki. Um, I'm being attacked. I'm, I'm going to respond. Just make sure that we're A-OK. -okay. All right, he's got an enclosure. I am now blocking his extension, just like I said. I am cut off. That means I need to make sure that I have good shape. Otherwise, I'm going to be in trouble. Right, so let's go ahead and get a base. Bonk, we have a base. I'm under attack with that base. So I will defend it. I'm being shoulder hit. That's something that I forgot. I knew I was forgetting. I even paused. I took it out of the video probably. But I paused for five minutes. I'm like there's something very important I'm forgetting to mention. Shoulder hits. We respond to shoulder hits. We respond to caps. We respond to attachments. Um, attachments, shoulder hits, and caps. I think that that's it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we can also haunt ahead of two and three stones. So I will go ahead and do that. In fact, we can double haunt eight ahead of two and three stones. So we can do that. And then I'm going to protect my cutting point. Just like I mentioned. Just like I mentioned. I don't want to get my group surrounded. You can see here that if he caps me, he's beginning to like draw a line down here. Like, am I alive? Am I dead? Who knows? Who cares? Boom. Don't have to worry about it now. I'm being attached. We respond to attachments. So, sending out. He can head two and three. Don't want him to do that. Okay. I will defend my little groupy group. And just like so, he attached to me. I will respond. And now I will grab an enclosure. He should block my extension. He gave me Sente, so I can extend from this if I want to. But he's already got a stone here. Do I really want to go right up to his stone? I probably don't. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and reinforce this little guy. Does that sound good? Hmm. I don't know. You said to extend from an enclosure. There's room to extend from your enclosure. Are you a liar? Is that what I'm hearing? Hmm? Okay. Okay. You know what? You're right. I said to extend from an enclosure. I'll extend from the enclosure. I think I have reasons not to do this, but hey, whatever, right? <laughs> uh, don't let him connect underneath your stone. So when there's a stone on either side, one space away, we don't want to do a jump because there's a connection underneath. So we're going to go ahead... <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to go ahead and do a diagonal. For now, we're not going to be worried about which side we diagonal on. Make sure you diagonal so they can't come underneath you like that. This is very small. I could enclose him completely, in which case he's kind of dead. Because if he, who cares if he pushes here or whatever, right? But I'll go and play here. I'll haunt it head of three stones. I'll do it again, too. And then I'll connect. Yep. And I will come out. Make sure I'm not going to be dead. It's kind of like a shoulder at Delio. Yep. Don't want honey. Um, just connect. Okay. That takes care of that. That's done. Now what? Brrr, um... Well, I played very, very simple. My groups are fine. His groups are fine. Because we're not really interested in trying to kill. We could have, and I get into that kind of stuff later. Like, there's a two space here. You could attack that. There's a two space here. We could have attacked that. But a lot of time, 
people make mistakes in Go because they get like wrapped up in trying to do that kind of stuff. Their basics goes out the window. They start playing small moves. They start losing Sente. Their opponent starts taking the big moves instead. They fall further behind because now they had tried to attack. The attack didn't go anywhere. They lost Sente in the attack. Their opponent got to play a bigger move elsewhere as a result. Now they're further behind, so they had tried to attack something else because now they're really desperate. And their position just keeps trying to get worse and worse and worse. Uh, I'm going to come out here, I guess, threaten to like bring this group out. I don't want to try to do it severely. I want him to play here and live. Because uh, if I play here, he might just die. And I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want my opponent to die. I ain't wanting any of that stuff. Make sure he's not connect uh, cutting out. We're connected to here, so I don't really see a reason to respond. Like, what's he gonna Hane? I had two stones, admittedly, but the Hane there, I'm connected, so does it really matter? So what are we gonna do instead? Well, I have a choice. Here are my choices. I could go into corner and poke his 3-3 Aji. I could clamp here, because it only has three liberties. A clamp, it takes a two, I could probably kill it. I could grow, and I could grow here. A lot of options, a lot of options. Let's go with the growing one. Let's try to use this wall effectively, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and play here. This is a threat, because it is, th whoops, that's supposed to be in a race. There we go. Because it was threatening to come in through there, right? Uh, now he hit my stone, so I will respond. Boop. Just like so. Okay. This is a large knight. Large knights can be cut. Small knights can be cut. So let's ask him, can I cut you? Another thing I meant to mention. Be wary of small knights and large knights. These things can be cut. These stones are now dead. And that's game. I connect up solidly. He has to live locally. He can't do that because there's not enough room to make two eyes between these two these two areas. Which means that's uh, unfortunately dead. Now, shape what we're talking about. He's got point here, point here, point here. If he plays a point here, then he's got the table shape, right? Here, 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 and here is table shape. It's my move. I will block him from making that table shape. And the minute I did that, he resigned. Because he knew he was dead. So I will commend him for knowing that he's in trouble there. That's really, really good. But as you can see, we didn't really do much uh, of anything here. We played large points, right? We made sure that our groups were nicely connected. Didn't let him high ahead of two and three stones. The only really aggressive thing that we did was this right here. We have Sente. This is a large knight. So we just asked the question, can I cut the large knight? Now, why does this work? Well, it's simple. If you place here, that's double Atari, right? So he's not going to do that. Right? He's not going to do that. So, if I play here, you can see that he's dead. So let's try something different. Maybe he plays here. Maybe he does. Maybe he does. That would be better. That would be better. But, look at the cutting points here. What if I play... What if I play here? Will he Atari? What if I play here? Will he Atari? What if I play here? It looks like he's cut again, right? Because what's he going to do? Play this one? Didn't we just go over this one? He's dead, right? That large, that's the, the knights, man. That large knight just couldn't handle it. Uh, if you can't read it that way, you could also read it this way. This way actually sucks. <laughs> I mean, it technically works, right? It technically works. Technically works, technically works. There's one other benefit to doing this. 
even if you can't read the kills, like maybe you can't read the kills, no harm. It, it's okay if you can't. I'm going to show you a trick. I can now play here. Because this again, go away. Threatens to kill, right? So this is Sente, and he'll be like, no, I don't want you doing that. Then we suddenly develop a middle area. Because we poked at the large knight that wasn't defended. Right? Now he could have, and he should have, gone back and played here. In which case, I will play here. And then I get some of this. And then he'll come in here to make sure I don't get all of it. And then we continue along our merry little way. We'd ask ourselves, where's the next largest point? And the game would continue going onwards. Nice and simple. Which would probably be playing here, I guess. Poke at that, right? Something like that one? Or maybe, 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 maybe playing um, here first, just to make sure that he can't secure this area for himself. Like I'm securing the, the kind of like red air area, right? Either way, you kind of get the idea of what we're looking for in the basic games. Let's go ahead and play again, because we're getting a lot of game requests today. Let's go ahead and play one more game. Okay, this time we are black. I will give him a hello, nice to meet you. And I'm going to go and grab a modern enclosure because we're seeing him nowadays, so I have to play it. He approaches me. I don't want to be outnumbered, so I'm going to back off, like I mentioned. Gives me an enclosure. He's got an extension. We're going to block his enclosure. Just like I said at the start of all of this. He backed off. I'm just going to go and get a base. Something nice and simple. Boom, got a base. Um, he's approaching me. Again, I don't want him to get that uh, enclosure to go to the extension, so I'm going to block that one too. This one... Uh, I said that we don't jump up from pincers. I said we don't jump up from pincers. This is one of the only times we will, because you can't pincer here because of this stone. I'm going to show you why. This stone just died. He doesn't, he doesn't know the sequence, but it's okay. He's, he's going to learn in a minute. Like, this common sequence is very, very common. It's so common. Like, he's going to turn here to try to live, or he'll just play there and he's dead. That's fine, too. Yeah, these stones are dead. I can respond pretty much without even thinking about it, because I know as long as I'm nice and solid, and I have good shape, and I'm strong here, these stones don't live. They, they, they just don't. So, I'll respond again. And I'll respond again. I have complete and utter faith in what I said. That I, I know he's dead. Simple as that. I know he's dead. And that's how we can kill him here. All right, so he split me. I want to grab an extension from my enclosure. It's a little bit of a mini one. I'm going to, it's, as you can see, we're kind of being outnumbered here. I'm going to go ahead and defend myself. Make sure he can't hit my 3-3 and surround me. And get rid of my base. It's ugh, a lot of bad things happening there. I'm being shoulder hit. So I respond to that. I will haunt it out of two and three stones. As I keep mentioning... Um, I'm going to show you something. Even if I don't play here, even playing this Hane is also good. Like, however you play the Hane, you can find it useful for you in some way or shape or form. Because the other way, we get outside influence and stuff. Here, if he had defended, like, this way or whatever, we would have the clamp here. Since he played this way, I get the double Hane here after all, because of double Atari right there. So you can see how over-concentrated this little shape is getting. And it's just because I decided to haunt it had a 2 and 3 stones. Um, stand on up. 
This corner is now absolutely ginormous. All right, now here is where I mentioned about small moves. Are those two moves really worth going after right now? And the answer to that is no. Why is the answer to that no? Because I've got a huge wall here that I could use. So imagine attacking from here. At that point, I just need something up into this area to make this area like really big, right? So, so I need something in this area. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play literally along the line I just freaking drew on the board. I, I played there. There we go. Because we're getting a wall here, a wall here. These two stones are irrelevant. He should drop them immediately and get a move in here before this influence just claims the entire middle. And I think that's so cool when I get a subscriber when I'm not even streaming. Thank you for your sub. There, I-S-B-K-C-H. <laughs> that's cool. That's cute. Not, I'm not streaming. Not live. I appreciate your support. So he's probably noticing right now what I'm doing. Or not. Okay, so... <clears throat> don't get too complicated here. Small knights can be cut. I could play here to threaten to cut him. That's something, huh? Instead, I'm just gonna... What, play here before he jumps out, you think? I know what I want to play. I want to play a move like... Like over in here or something. Threatening to come on in. And thus develop this area. But tell you what, I'll give him Sente and just defend. And I played it here, not here. That way he doesn't feel compelled to worry about me coming in further. And response. This is pure Gote. It connected my it connected me up though. I do get a few points. I just could have probably gotten more here. This move is in and of itself isn't inherently bad. It's not inherently bad. It it just could have been a little bit better. Okay, now, this is a nice move. He's trying to surround me. That is a nice elementary way of beginning to reduce your opponent. Because remember, sector line is right here. He's on the outer edge. That is fantastic. Plus one to Gryffindor. Now, the problem here is you have to look after that stone. You know? I'm trying to keep this very elementary. But there are so many attacks swirling around in my head that I want to perform. Mm. Let's try something simple. What you never want to do is be caught unaware of your opponent redrawing the sector line. I just jumped up. The new sector line is here. He needs to get out from behind this line. You need to watch your shape while you're doing it too. Look what he just did. If I can play a move over here that works, then he's in trouble because he loses the two stones. He probably should have played the, the small knight just to be safe. Because this gives me a chance to go back and cut through him. But I have to be careful, admittedly, because this is now a wall. If he starts growing this, that's bad for me. So I tell you what, since we're fine with this group, I'm going to take a break and I'm going to play um, the one point jump. Make sure you can't do exactly what I just said. Make sure what I just said cannot happen. And we're not doing it very quickly. We're doing it very, very chill. And I'm going to do it again. Just really chill. Okay, looks like there's a little hole there. I'll come on in. Yeah, 
and up we go. Now he's got good shape. You see the problem? How much of a pain in the butt it is to look after this? I could play here now and something over in here to try to re-attack this. Instead, I'm going to watch my shape for a minute. Make sure he can't like push in and keep doing the same thing to me that I just did to him. I will defend before we attack. There we go. I've now defended the new territory that I've just acquired for myself. So now I'm going to go back and attack him if he doesn't defend this area up, which he just did not. But I want to make sure I'm not disconnected. So, okay, fair play to you, good sir. I will respond to that one too. Um, okay, I don't want to get cut through there. Sure, I'll respond. Okay. Okay, it looks like he's defended himself there. So now we're in um, some endgame. This move is huge. Small knight can be cut. If the small knight can be cut, the small knight can be cut. That's all there is to it, right? Let's go and cut it. Let's go and cut it. Ladder works for me. And the connection is just solid. And that takes care of that. So this group is dead. As you can see here, we saw that the there was a small knight there. We defended against it. And now we connected. We could have also played here, admittedly that that also works, but we already killed one thing today. Let's not go crazy. You just need to play here to live. Good. Um End game now, I guess, right? So let's go ahead and play end game. End game, we look for Sente first. These moves are huge because we're just pushing our opponent back. Ooh, Ko. Um, the answer to that should be a Ko. Here, and if he takes, you play here, right? I'll go and connect. This time I'll connect. I mean, we already win anyway, so there's no reason to pick more fights, you know? Now, you might be saying, when did I count to know that we were already ahead? And I really didn't. I'm just confident we've been playing large enough moves that uh, we're ahead. I'm confident we've been playing large moves, and um, our opponent got a couple of things killed. We didn't get anything killed. We haven't been playing small. So, we should be fine. If we're not fine, that means that, okay, something we played was small. Something we played was tiny. But I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case. So, more forcing moves here. Threatening to kill. Um, go ahead and try to lock him out here, I guess. I don't know, something like this maybe? Not really sure where to play. <laughs> lock him out of that, I guess. Just make sure he can't do anything. <laughs> okay, don't want him pushing. True enough, true enough. Yep, first line's good. Don't want him cutting. Uh, doesn't quite work yet, but I'll give it to you. Yep. But, let's just find that. Huh, I do, <coughs> or I'm screwed. Okay, fair enough. Um, I'll go ahead and just play here. I'd have to eventually anyway. 
block like so. Pushing seems fine. And pokey pokey poke. Tari connect. Poke poke poke. Poke poke poke. I don't know. Defend? All right, you're signed. I will then say, had a nice game with you. And he left. Cool. So let's go ahead and review this real quick. I played enclosure. I grabbed an extension, true. But I prioritize his rather than mine. It's fine. You can play here, have him play there. It's no deal. Nope, no problem. No problem. I just prioritize his is all. Same thing here. This just doesn't live. Sorry, it doesn't. Um, if you go in the other way that I mentioned, play here and then get this one, it's not the end of the world there. Reason being, one of the reason being is because, like, if you look at the amount of territory that's actually here, you see that it's a little bit of a small amount, you know? This right here, you can see how it's shrinking, right? And ours is growing. Yeah, it's not, not a very efficient shape. Not a very efficient shape. But yeah, this just gets killed. This just gets killed. Reason being is this thing has to have somewhere to run to in order to not be dead. You know? But as you can see by my stone literally being right there, that's not a, that's not a thing. So there's nowhere to go. Therefore, it's not alive. Uh, they could try to play this one, and we'll play here, and it's the same thing. Uh, predominantly. Um, I think. Hmm. That's odd. I'm forgetting something. What am I forgetting? Hmm. Well, you know, I thought this was always classically dead, but maybe I'm wrong. It's not classically dead. It's just really, really bad for white. Hmm. Yeah. I guess it's just really, really bad for white. Yeah, either way, you wouldn't want to be in this position as white. Uh, this way he's just flat out dead. He blocked, so we got what we could. Double Hane, double Hane, double, double, double Hane, threatened to grow. Now, I want to show you the move that I was previously going to play in the game. Which is, I could play something like this. Because if he doesn't play response, I could play here, right? Now you can see these stones are isolated. Not only are these stones isolated, I could potentially come up here. A lot of really terrible Aji up there if I'm allowed to cut through, right? Just really, really terrible Aji. So it's a good bet he'll defend. But if he defends once, he'll defend twice, he'll probably defend again, and suddenly, We've got a little bit of a wall here, here, here. We're really close to taking this middle part for ourselves, right? And it, it's all because of uh, he got, got to force him to defend himself. This was okay.
Now, let's say I didn't play here. What was the score after this? I don't know, actually. How do I find out? I can't play. I can't find out that way. If I open up this one and then go to here, bring up that one, then I can. Right? So go back here now. Uh, wait, no, forward, 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 forward. Yeah, there we go. So if I had just defended myself, like, I don't know, this or something. And he defends himself, and then let a little bit of a poke. Yeah, we're leaving comfortably by 14 without seeing the cutting point. If we can't see the cutting point, then we're winning by more than 14. It's fine. It's all fine. Like I said, I was pretty sure we were going to be okay because we have not been playing small moves. That's all. And uh, yeah, I think that covers that. Also, I should have played here. All right, I think that about covers that. Hope you guys enjoyed today's basic videos. Hope you enjoyed today's more DDK-friendly basics videos. As always, I'll see you next time. Take care, buddy.